Hello, everyone. It's so nice to meet you guys and have this happy, positive afternoon. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to Erica today. Um, Erica is a photographer and a multidisciplinary uh, storyteller known for her essays, which document cultures that maintain close ties with nature. Um, her work has been published in National Geographic and multiple books, and she's one of 11 women featured in National Geographic's ongoing traveling exhibition, Women of Vision. The, ex the exhibit uh, showcases a diversity of photos from the magazine's most accomplished women photojournalists. So I'm so excited to talk to Erica. <laughs> So, uh, so Erica, uh, let's start. First of all, you said you're local. Um, my question is, where where are you? Where do you live? So I live in Boynton Beach. Oh, okay. Yeah, I moved here probably about six or seven years ago now, and it's been yeah, I'm really loving Florida. <laughs> Great. Now, how long have you been a photographer? Um, so I've been working as a photographer a little over twenty years. Okay, great. Is that something you've always wanted to do, or did you have a career change? So no, I knew pretty early. I think um, I was pretty young, probably around 15. I thought that I would do something with photography, but I wouldn't say at 15 that I understood what that meant. Um, but then I went to, you know, I went and studied at university and I did a master's in like film and animation. So, um, and so I would say that I'm a photographer, but probably foremost is, you know, I'm a, I'm a storyteller that uses photography. Um, but that sort of evolved over the, you know, the past, the past years. Was there something in particular that happened that was like an aha moment for you that you said, okay, this is my calling. This is what I was meant to do. Hmm. So I'd say there's, I mean, there's probably a bit, yeah, sort of layered. I would say the first one. Um, so my father um, was, had been working on the Hubble Space Telescope. He was one of the designers. And so when I was quite young, he was bringing home uh, the early photographs that were coming back of like Saturn and Jupiter. And I remember, um, you know, they were like on paper, right? Like literally printed on paper with Kodak on it. And I remember holding the planet and I thought to myself, well, wait a second, you know, if I can, I'm, I'm literally holding something that's so far away, but at the same moment I felt that it was a part of me and so I just my brain at the time I was like oh well, this must be photography and it must be some kind of magic so I thought to myself I want to be a part of that magic and I was pretty young and then yeah they <laughs> Angel puts this picture up here but this is also it's actually really important because then as I you know like I said I went to university and as I started to work in storytelling I worked for Time Magazine for years and and so I started to realize that photography is a tool really for you know telling you know, figuring out what it means to be human, but also telling stories of what it means to be human. And this picture is really important because obviously, I don't know, what does it say? It was 1981 or something. I was maybe five or something. And I realized, you know, at least, you know, I'd say at least in the past hundred years, especially in, 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 in the United States, I think so many of us relate who we are to the photograph of ourselves, right? And so, I mean, even here, there's a picture and then the back, I like sign my name, but there's Kodak, but like this is the, right? These become our memories. We have our, our mental memories, but think about it. How many of our memories are actually from a photograph and that's how we remember the moment. So um, I think like throughout my career, I've, you know, I've just expanded and, and found um, the fascination in, in trying to develop and, and, and make that um, connection more, more understood for myself really. Right. Excellent. So, so let me ask you this. So you, 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 you document cultures that maintain close ties with nature. Can you explain what that means? Sure. Well, I should say first, um, you know, the interest for me, I mean, I would say started it, you know, I, I began documenting hunting. I worked for Field and Stream Magazine for years and um, and the reason though, so I, I was documenting the culture of hunting. And what I realized is spending so much time in nature, I began to feel like, um, like a little bit more fine tuned to everything that was going on around me. And then I think it sort of woke up the obvious in me that we are nature, we're not separate from nature, right? We're a working part of nature. And so I think I've, I've really focused for, you know, pretty intensely for the, at least the past 18 years on just understanding 
what that means on individual levels, on you know cultural levels, even on levels of like countries. So just trying to put myself in situations um, where I can learn from people that have very specific knowledge about, like I said, whether it's their culture, whether it's a specific landscape like the Arctic or the rainforest or whatever that may be, and trying to understand um, what it means for all of us, I think sort of, you know, globally connected, but how individual people and cultures interpret that knowledge that they hold very specific. So was there, I'm sure, I'm sure you probably have many, but was there one that pops to mind, one thing that you just weren't expecting that you learned on one of these assignments, something that just like really affected you or changed you that you didn't see coming? Hmm, let me think. Well, there's <laughs> two things the way I can answer it. The first is, um, you know, every story, I mean, even from, right, even from the beginning when I was, you know, or just say working on my own person, you know, in order to get into photography, I really was focusing on, you know, I had to learn about myself first. Oh, I mean, we're constantly learning about ourselves. So I would say it's, it's kind of ongoing, but I mean, it's important to sort of focus, you know, the, the that sort of intentness of storytelling on, on understanding where I came from first, because obviously all of my stories um, aren't going to be separate from my perspective. So early on, I would photograph my family and friends. And then as I, you know, as I got more into, you know, working with magazines, then I would start to turn the camera, you know, onto to learning from other people. But what, what I would say that I didn't realize is that, you know, in order to experience the next story, you had to have had the story before and you had to have the story before that and before that. So they all exist together. Like, you know, it's not like all of a sudden there was one moment I'm like, oh, this is it, or this makes the most sense. I realized that if I hadn't had the moment before, that moment wouldn't have been clear. I wouldn't have been in a position to interpret it or to have that experience. And as simple as that may seem, that's actually like a pretty big aha for me is that it's, it's everything is one chain of connection. And um, each, each, each moment sort of preps you to understand and, and, and be able to interpret the next. Um, so that would probably be the biggest one, but maybe if, like something that could be a bit more concrete is, um, you know, I lived in, and worked in the Arctic in the Scandinavian Arctic for four years. And um, I, there was a time probably halfway through that where I remember we were like out on tundra and we've been out for quite a while and you're, you know, you're sleeping in tents. And I remember waking up and I went outside and I saw there's all this snow and there was like, there, there was a lava, which is like a, it's a type of a tent just across the way and it was completely covered so everything was white with just this like little tent covered with white and I looked and I thought to myself oh my goodness I've never felt more at home than I did in this moment wow. and it wasn't about necessarily the arctic but all of a sudden there was I think through all this process of of, of being able and, and really having sort of an honor to to learn and tell people's stories I realized that you know home is exactly where you are in the moment and especially when people are open and sharing what it means you know to be to be home for them um and I never expected that so so I, I remember that <laughs> a lot when you say um home is exactly where you are in the moment I mean I think everybody can agree that we all strive for that sense of peace and place and ability to be present, right? And that's that's something that people work their whole lives for and they, they don't always find it. So I think it's great that you not only found it, but can help document that. So that's great. Um, I see, uh, well, you were talking about working in the Arctic and I saw the picture of uh, Jane Goodall. And was that was that a young uh, Fauci that I saw there too? Yeah, that was during the the avian bird flu. So I got I photographed him. Like, I mean, would it have been? Oh, maybe two thousand six. When did it? I have to remember back. Sorry, that sounds really. I should remember. I should have because I had it in there, but I don't remember what year it was. But um, but yeah, it was great. I mean, so I've gotten um. You know, I've, I, my work really has given me the opportunity to meet all types of people, scientists, yeah. writers, artists. Um, I mean, 
I mean, really children, it just anything. And, and, and they're all, like I said, it's, and it, this goes back to that thing I was saying, but the first aha moment is like every person I meet just sort of sets the stage for the next person and the next person. And it, and it doesn't matter who they are or what they do, but, but having like a minute with somebody like Fauci or a minute with somebody like Jane Goodhall, it just starts to add, like, you just kind of see all these pieces of a larger puzzle sort of fit in and you realize that each one of us in the world sort of holds a certain space. Um, and I think as a storyteller, just to get to experience that space for a moment, you kind of carry that energy and then you carry it somewhere else and somewhere else. And that I think still, um, I think I'm still in awe of that, you know, that sort of possibility to be able to do that. Sure, sure. Well, I think probably a lot of people would find that um, very inspirational. Um, is there a photographer or a person in general that you find uh, particularly inspirational or that has inspired you in your work? Yeah, so um, again, again, this is gonna go probably, it'll probably stick pretty in line with the way that I see the world, um, right? I mean, you're inspired by that which you know and that which is around you. So obviously growing up, it would be, you know, my my aunts, my mom, the people, my sisters and, my, you know, the uh, my stepmom people, you know, close to me that were in my circles, right? So you, you are only a mirror of, of those that are around you. And I, I really believe that. And um, and so I think it, would, it starts that way. And then honestly, like, as I get, got into, you know, there's various professors and, and editors that I've worked with over the years and, 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 and colleagues, like amazing colleagues, um, women photographers that have like blazed the way um, for me not having to, you know, break too many ceilings because <laughs> they've already done it. Um, like Lynn Johnston is one of them. Um, she's down here in, in Palm Beach sometimes as well. And, um, but, but, but that being said, um, I can't, do this work without every single person in the photographs, right? Because again, as much as I'm bringing a part of me to every story that I do, um, right? There's no story without exchange. Um, so everything I do is it's it's a it's a it's a created story of me and whoever I'm. I, I have that sort of opportunity to be with, and um, and so I'd say actually every person that I get to share that space with inspires. Um, well, I don't know, it inspires my, it inspires my images, but it also inspires my, my understanding of, of, and my perceptions of the world moving forward. Yeah, that's interesting that you describe photography as an exchange, because I think somebody that's not familiar with photography in, in, in the intimate way that you are, might see it as, as, you know, a subject and a photographer, right? But you're talking about like like an exchange, a, a, a relationship, a connection that you develop, which is different than somebody just snapping a picture, right? It's a different level. Um, is that something? Is that something that you can teach? Like, if there was somebody on here that was interested in taking, you know, photos that told a story, how how would somebody learn how to engage and be part of that? and not just walk up and snap a photo. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think the real, well, yes, let me think, how would I, can it be taught? Yes, I mean, of course it could be taught. Um, and I, but I think it's not so much that it needs to be taught as much as it needs to be remembered, right? I mean, why would anything that we do be any different than, than you know, what I mean is that why would any kind of job we do or any kind of way that we engage in the world be any different than who we are at the core of us? So I think that if we think there's something separate somehow, I mean, any way that I engage, whether I'm treating, you know, doing something at the grocery store and speaking to somebody or when I'm cleaning my dishes, all of these things, you know, bring who I am to it. And I think, so I think for photography and specifically if there's photographers that are listening to this that are interested, you know, the way that you approach you know, photography and, and it, 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 it's really just kind of on uh, the core of who you are. And so how you would write, you know, you shouldn't, or I don't think so, relate any differently, you know, to, to the camera that way. And, and the camera, 
really right. It's like a tool. The camera is not making the picture. It's definitely not taking the picture. Um, the camera is a tool um, to open up a line or a, a, a path of communication. And, um, and I also think the one very specific thing about the camera, perhaps versus writing or painting or some other sort of form of communication, is that is this absolute magician of, of playing with time, right? It, it can, it, it can, it, it, it basically can hold the past, present, and future, right? And, and it also, you know, it's, it's, it's magic is with light as well, but, but not many tools have the ability to play with our aspect of, of time and specifically linear time, but think about it. You know, even that first picture that I showed you of me as a child. So I'm bringing the past here, I'm literally holding it and therefore it's activating these memories. And, and I also would challenge that it can, in, you know, sort of portend the future as well. Um, and, and so, yes, so to answer the question, not to be too long winded, but to answer the question, absolutely. We, we can all approach it that way, but I think it, the, the mindset isn't about photography or taking a photography class. It's how you personally want to engage with the world. And, and if you choose to use the camera as a tool, it can be a very, very powerful tool in, in, in helping you um, uh, gain you know, greater and, and more profound understanding of, of relationships with people specifically. Right, right. So let me ask you this. You're obviously very, very accomplished. Do you still find that there's um, challenges that you face um, as a photographer, um, like things you're still trying to perfect, things you're still trying to work on? Of course. I mean, I'm not, let me think. Um, yes, because it goes back to the point that I, that I kind of was saying before. I mean, again, photography is just the you know, sort of the extension of, of myself. So I, you know, I'm constantly trying to understand the world around me in, in new ways. Um, I, I have to challenge myself to open, you know, I can, you know, just open myself up to different ways of thinking. Um, sometimes, you know, I like maybe a really basic example, you get, there's so much going on in the world. Like even today we were talking about all these things and it's like, you know, I have to give myself either the break to just turn it off and say, okay, I don't need to engage in everything. Or um, I also, then I have to say, you know what? It's time to engage. It's time to open up the front door and go out and, and take on a new, you know, to take on a new story and, and realize that that's important as well. And so I think I, that's probably my big, I, you know, I, I think I, I'm constantly in a process of balancing, you know, the, the doing and the not doing and, and where do I, um, you know, where do I balance my energy in that? And then also, I mean, I think just probably from a more personal perspective, just um, thinking often about the tools that I use. I know that I'm a storyteller, that's very, very clear. And I don't think that will ever change, but it's constantly thinking, is there, a, is there another tool um, that I could use to, to maybe, mm, more clearly engage in, in, in that act of storytelling and pushing beyond what I'm comfortable with, so. Right. So as, as a woman photographer, um, what unique challenges do you face? And I'm thinking um, you do like you, and it could not be this, it could be something else, but I'm thinking you do a lot of traveling, right? And you travel, you're talking about going to the Arctic Circle. And I can see from some of those pictures you've been from to some pretty uh, interesting places. Um, and I don't know where they all are, but I know that not every place is necessarily safe for women. Um, and I wonder if that's ever a challenge that you face or just what challenges you might face, you know, if you're ever working with, you know, in a male dominated industry, is that the case? Or like, what challenges do you face and how do you, how do you overcome those challenges as a, as a high level woman photographer? Um, sure. I mean, I think, um, yeah, I would, I, I don't, I really can't speak for other people and I don't know, but I know for myself and I've always been like this. I I've been, I'm very, although it, I do go to very extreme places and I'm constantly, constantly traveling. I would also say that I'm very, very thoughtful. I mean, I, I would meaning that, and, and, and I don't, and yes, and that probably comes from my background of being a woman. I, I'm, I don't just, how should I say? I do explore. I think, I actually think I deeply explore, but I think I always do it 
with with like an intense thoughtfulness. I'm not just like, okay, yeah, like I can just run off and doesn't matter, run into the rainforest by myself for a month and not think about it. Like actually, not only do I do it for my own safety, but it's also just not thoughtful to other people as well to put yourself in situations where you, you know, you know, you're, where you're just, I don't know, where you don't, you haven't really laid this, the ground surface yet. And I, so I think that's important, but I think as a woman, I mean, I, I, a lot of people say, oh, you do all these things. I, I constantly travel either with somebody. I always use a woman assistant and I always have for over 20 years. I've used a woman assistant. Very rarely have I worked with a man um, in terms of a photographic assistant. Um, and then places when I'm going to other countries, I always use either we a friend or a guide or somebody that knows the area and one is for my own safety but two is just out of respect why would i assume that i'm going to show up in the rainforest and know how to act or what to do it is a constant learning process um even just to understand the behaviors of other people and other cultures and and to respect those things and to bring of course bring myself to that i'm not i don't want to be false in a certain place but you need to have an understanding of of where you're walking into and so i would say that i highly highly rely on, on people that have a greater knowledge than myself in most situations. And, um, and some of that, probably a lot of that's based on being a woman and just, you know, being, I'm, I think about those things. I don't, I, sometimes I'm driving, honestly, I can get off the plane and I can drive for eight hours in the middle of nowhere. I don't think that's so smart by myself. So I wouldn't say I'm the most intrepid person out there, um, but I'm, but I'm really, I, I enjoy being thoughtful and I've actually been, I haven't really um, come across too many deeply precarious situations. And I think um, that has to do with the way that I approach them, right. luckily, so to this point. Yeah, good. Um, as we look at this picture of Oprah, um, it just begs the question, do you have a favorite person that you've ever photographed? <laughs> no, that's no, not I wish I could, favorite. I wish I had a favorite person. Um, no, but I will say this, I don't have a favorite person, but I will say this is that everybody, okay, so this project specifically, this was a really amazing project I got to work on called um, uh, Women, A Century of Change. And it was with Geographic and we published a book and we did an, you know, um, we did a, a feature on it in the magazine in, in 2019. And I photographed 21 women from around the world, from like Jacinda Ardern to Oprah to Jane Goodall to Emma Gonzalez, Tanya Burke, Alex Morgan, and many, many more. I don't want to leave names out, but just there's too many. Um, and but what so what was amazing? And again, it goes back to every moment is meant to happen to the, the moment before. Each woman, I, I think I said it when I was describing that. Each woman held a certain space, and each woman woman sort of dropped a bit of their own knowledge and way that they approach things in the world. Like, just like you asked me about what, you know, like each, I feel like each one gave me this little bit of glimpse into how they sort of manage to be women in, in, in the world. And what does that look like? And I, Oprah said um, something to the effect of, you know, cause I think I said to her, gosh, how many, you've just must've, I mean, how many times have you been photographed? you know and she was very present she came she gave like a lot of time she was very present and I'm thinking to myself you've just been photographed so many times how how do you you know and she said you know what with all that I do there's just one part of yourself that you keep to yourself just one part and that allows you to keep going and keep going and um you know and then there was somebody like um you know, like Jane Goodall, like she didn't say this, but she carried it with her. So I thought, you know, I would get, you know, when I, you, you know, you get to hear that you're, you're, you'll, you'll potentially have the opportunity to photograph her. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, you want to go to Africa, you have all these thoughts. And I photographed her in, in, in London and in, in her assistant's apartment. And I realized, and this was a really important lesson for me is that it didn't matter. We didn't need to be in the middle of Africa to, 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 to have that she carries all of every, all that she is and all that she has you know believes in the world and all that energy that she has done to change it and, and to kind of um, bring to a higher level of, of understanding she carries that just with her it doesn't have to be in the place and that was a really important reminder for me um, so again it's not one person but it's 
all the people that I've gotten to meet, they just continue to, to make, you know, put, put the pieces in the puzzle of what it means to be human. And I kind of get to luckily put each part of that in my backpack and, and carry that with me. Wow. Well, that's fantastic. And thank you for taking a little piece of each of those people and sharing it with us through your photographs. It's just amazing. Um, listen, we want to thank everyone for joining us here on Facebook Live today. Um, we're going to move our conversation over to Zoom now for those people that have signed up for a candid roundtable where you get to ask questions directly to Erica about her career. So stay tuned to the Chamber website um, for the next Women's Fest series. It's going to be on March Third at 4.30. So we really look forward to seeing you there. And those of you that are signed up, please stay with us. And we're going to move this over to Zoom and keep talking to Erica. And fantastic. Erica, that was great. I loved it. Yay. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you, Wendy. So... Thank you for asking the questions. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. So oh, right now, interesting. right now, everybody has a chance to be able to ask Erica questions. I think probably the easiest way to move forward with this is if you have questions for her. Actually, there's not that many of us. If everybody wants to go off of mute, um, does everyone know where the raise hand thing is at the bottom where the 